Next, Bob Urey is going to be joined by Gemini McCary and Elizabeth Lane to present the plan. Hello, I'm Gemina McCary. I'm with the Houston Rockets. And I'm Elizabeth Lane with Lionstone Investments. We are members of Central Houston Inc. Millennial Enterprise, also known as CHIME. We've been chosen by leaders within our companies who are Central Houston members to lead the charge in all things important to millennials. And we've been asked to speak to make Bob feel a little bit younger and more hip. <laughs> The story today is the recent rise of downtown, a tale of two Super Bowls, and the amazing period of growth and change from 2004 to 2017. And wow, how, how, how things have changed with barren parking lots transformed into beautiful, beautiful parks and the opening of new residential properties with mind-blowing amenities. It's easier than ever to get around and explore downtown, whether it's on two wheels using B-Cycle or the expansion of Metro Rail, or the free Green Link bus circulator that connects downtown destinations. The unveiling of the Marriott Marquis and its instantly iconic Texas-shaped Lazy River is the latest of the many new hotel options that have sprung up around the district, cementing its status as Houston's premier destination for visitors. And spending a night out in downtown is no longer exclusive to office workers who are trying to avoid traffic. Highly regarded restaurants and bars call downtown home from the James Beard Award winner, Justin Yu's Theater Rex in the Warehouse District, to unique pubs clustered around Main Street and Historic Market Square, to the new Avenida Houston campus, anchored by Hugo Ortega's highly regarded Zochi. It's easy to assume that these changes are the natural result of trends or demographics, as millennials lead the way back to the urban core in cities across the country. But in reality, they came about as the result of thoughtful planning by civic leaders who recognized that a strong and vibrant downtown is essential to the success of the greater Houston region. We are thrilled and honored to be a part of Plan Downtown. It's critical that all voices are heard, and as millennials, the future of the city and downtown is incredibly important to us. Our generation values things such as quality of life, technology, innovative working space, diverse living options, and of course, uh, great places to have fun. <laughs> we think this plan hits on all of those elements and more. To tell you more about the plan, we are pleased to introduce our fearless leader, Central Houston's president, Bob Urey. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Lizzie and Gemini, you all are just terrific. Uh, I just get energized standing here with them. And every time I'm with our Chime group, I feel that way. It's just amazing. Um, and we're, you will be leading as we accomplish so much of what's in the plan. Plan Downtown, Converging Culture, Lifestyle, and Commerce is presented as a framework for our collective actions to continue, if not accelerate, our momentum in downtown's development and to capture the opportunities and address the challenges of future change. As Ann, Lizzie, and Gemina have well presented, we're making progress with downtown today based on decades of effort. When you think about the area that is downtown was the home of all city life here for well over a century, but responding to explosive growth in Houston from the 60s into the 80s, other activity centers sprung up all across the region. And collectively, our civic leaders add, work to add arts, convention, sports facilities to the landmark skyscrapers that were in downtown. Enterprising developers found opportunity in rehabbing historic buildings and markets for new hotels and housing. While public agencies undertook construction of transit, transit streets, and led by philanthropists, new parks and Bayou Greenways were built, all at what seems to be an ever-increasing pace. Yes, we do seem to be at a turning point as envisioned in earlier plans, setting the stage today for Plan Downtown. Starting 15 months ago, we began organizing the Plan Downtown process. 
individuals from a dozen public and private nonprofit entities formed the core leadership uh, team, and you can see them here on the screen. 166 member steering committee, many of whom you are in the room, provided guidance. And through meetings, social media, the web, print media, electronic media, hundreds more citizens provided input, and we're hugely grateful to all who helped. Fortunately, all of that input gathered from so many led to a really strong consensus of a future vision. When we celebrate our city's bicentennial in 2036, downtown is at the forefront in advancing Houston as a great global city. With the progress we're making, just imagine what our region and its downtown could be like 20 years from now. And this will happen if we make downtown Houston's greatest place to be, the premier business and government location, the standard for livability, and the innovative leader in connectivity. We call those the four pillars going, for going forward, and Plan Downtown is organized around these. So let me take you through each one, and I'm gonna be just hit the highlights here because there's actually 144 different, rec and there's more than that really, recommendations in the plan, uh, and we do have an event coming here. Um, starting first, enhancing downtown as the greatest place to be. How do we enhance our growing reputation and unique assets? How do we provide a compelling, layered, and authentic mix of activities that define downtown? How do visitors and residents easily find satisfying and exciting activities that occupy their time? Can we create places of spontaneity where anyone can discover an enriching experience really at any time? Now, as TxDOT rebuilds the freeways around downtown over the next decade in the North Houston Highway Improvement Project, why not capture the opportunity to reconnect communities and also create exciting new urban places? The Green Loop will provide this opportunity. Let's look more closely at only a few of the plan's many ideas of what these places might be. By pairing the main lanes of I-45 and I-10 and I-69, the Pierce Elevated is no longer needed. Can we transform this area between downtown and midtown into a thriving new district, thus connecting the two? Just to the west, can we reconnect downtown and Freedmanstown and Fourth Ward? Built in the early 1960s, the freeway on the west side of downtown will be reconstructed as a less imposing connector lanes. Most of the civic buildings along this section were built to turn their backs on Buffalo Bayou. As we redevelop, can we open up buildings to have Bayou Vistas? And, oh yes, making the buildings more resilient to flooding. Can we transform Bagby Street into a pedestrian-friendly boulevard that anchors civic buildings and a wonderful new attractions along downtown's west side, including the theater district? Can we move, moving to the east side of downtown, main lanes of I-45 and I-10 will be placed side by side in a trench with a cap on top. Can this cap become an extension of our growing convention and sports complex while reconnecting downtown in Edo? Can this newfound urban space that most cities would just give anything for become a major urban place with parks, recreational facilities, food, beverage, entertainment, hotels, an expanded area where Houston can achieve even higher standards for hosting Final Fours, Super Bowls, World Club, Cups, and other global events, World Series? Can it further support residential growth in Edo and downtown? Can it be a trailhead to our region's amazing greenway and cycle path system? Focusing on the north end of downtown, the new freeway will be moved slightly to the north of its current alignment, giving University of Houston downtown the opportunity for development of a campus in a park-like setting. It also will allow for reconnecting pieces of the historic warehouse district and new development as long envisioned channel will allow White Oaks stormwaters to enter Buffalo further downstream, lowering flood elevations. 
can this revitalized place become a destination for Houstonians and tourists alike. As one walks between downtown's attractions today, they seem separated by often uninteresting streets and sidewalks. We have to conceive of walkability as the cornerstone of downtown's character. So how can we make this happen? In this drawing envisioning Caroline Street, here are the features that we must think about to have great streets as downtown grows. They provide comfortable pedestrian thoroughfare with flowers, plants, and trees. They fill the gaps uh, along the walks with buildings of human scale, color, and texture at street level. These have transparent, active ground floors, especially with uses that serve daily needs of more and more residents and workers. Their lobbies, stores, and cafes open up to the street and provide quality furniture, shade, and signage and entrances. In the end, can we make our downtown streets a delight for our citizens and visitors in making downtown the place to be? With over 150,000 employees, including 26,000 in government jobs, and the highest concentration of Fortune 500 companies in the region, downtown is the region's premier business district. The energy industry has been central to this prominence. How do we diversify into new areas of the energy ecosystem and attract new corporate employers? How do we share ideas and promote long-term investment? How do we expand downtown's working population by over 20% over the next 20 years? a goal of Plan Downtown. One way is to build stronger community among downtown's corporate businesses and leaders. Another is to advance refreshed visions for what is required for our city and county governmental complexes to provide public services and reflect the values of 21st century governance. How can we adapt our renowned office buildings to address how we will work are working and will work in the future with flexible and co-working spaces that serve large and small companies? Can we have more shared amenity areas within leaseholds, within the buildings, within the surrounding neighborhoods? More and more these days, productive work involves collaboration that occurs in all of these places. This also leads to innovation. Downtown is poised to be at the center of it. A framework has been developed to enhance Houston's tech system, ecosystem, including the need for additional collaborative facilities to unlock the potential of this sector. Downtown's innovation district will be become a center of gravity for technology and entrepreneurship in the region. So what would downtown's innovation district involve? First, it would be a place of innovation cultivators located in a collaborative environment. It would be a location for funding networks. It would have excellent networking through the uh, city's larger innovation community. And it would be located in a place with neighbor building amenities. It would have offices and support functions where one can take on and find guidance and funding to turn in, uh, into a business. As they expand, the, there's office space close by where there's legal, technical, and financial support. Or prototyping or manufacturing needs could be met in industrial warehouse buildings in neighborhoods close to downtown. And it will network with universities for R&D and colleges and high schools to have a trained workforce. What is really exciting is that such a place is already happening today with early stage software and digital technology companies already part of a growing downtown innovation community. With more and more face-to-face -face encounters or collisions as we call them, that will attract high value talent and drive billions of dollars of investment. Ask everybody, and we did, and they will tell you that great downtowns have thousands of people living within. With 7,500 persons in downtown, living here, we are well on our way towards the plan's 20-year target population of 30,000, creating a sustainable community that supports 18-7 shopping, dining, and entertainment. 
The emergence of new residential communities provides options for many types of households. Even more should be provided in the future as we consider the needs of families, students, and aging adults. Residents desire neighborhoods that include corner groceries, bakeries, coffee shops, drugstores and dry cleaners, child and pet-oriented parks and daycare facilities, add in family-oriented smaller attractions, and of course, elementary and middle schools. And these neighborhoods are now emerging. Starting with the small neighborhoods in the warehouse district and followed by the historic district and the Main Street core, emerging neighborhoods now include the area around the ballpark, Discovery Green, and Southern Downtown. Plan Downtown envisions each of these as unique places drawing from either history or adjacent attractions, amenities, and unique public spaces. But this is really only part of the story as adjacent communities continue to experience extensive residential development shown in yellow, orange, and red in a two-mile radius around downtown, now with over 65,000 residents. There are opportunities to work with neighboring districts and communities like to link downtown's edges into their neighborhood plans to accom accommodate growth. Thinking bigger, downtown should collaborate with the city and adjacent communities on a central city housing strategy that would address the infrastructure needs, the historic and cultural fabric, transit, bicycle, and walking connections to jobs, with many of those being in downtown, and a housing stock that is broadly inclusive of incomes who, of those, including even those who have, have been or are homeless. One of downtown's competitive advantages is its location at the center of Houston's mobility network. The highway, transit, bike, and greenway systems converge on downtown's walkable street grid, making it readily accessible from locations across the region. Major capital projects and changing development patterns are creating opportunities, such as the North Houston Highway Project. As our region's core becomes more dense, the central city requires new mobility options to connect to jobs and entertainment. One in six transit strips, uh, trips, excuse me, starts in downtown. In fact, well over half the residents in downtown work outside of downtown. So the plan recommends incrementally rebuilding our region's effective park and ride system to provide fast two-way transit connecting destinations across our region. The max lines, as envisioned in the plan, would provide seven day per week extended hour service, and then also have rush hour express, very similar to the park and ride that we have today. It would function like a commuter rail in older cities and be built incrementally as part of future freeway projects, being very adaptable for autonomous vehicles. Yes, autonomous vehicles, coming to our community soon. Ten years ago, we could not have imagined the changes to our transportation and communication systems introduced by the smartphone, and now the it, it is the vehicle in which we move. We have an opportunity here to be a leader in con connecti connectivity innovation if we just work together, and this will change our physical environment. For example, if you look at the diagram, we must be planning for streets of the future with intersections that perhaps have no traffic signals because the smart street lights are able to collect, collect data about traffic and, and, and optimize the movement of the autonomous vehicles. Drop zones for autonomous vehicles, charging stations and renew, renewable power for electric vehicles, special lanes for autonomous transit vehicles and buses, wayfinding well, with all sorts of real-time information and dockless bike share capability. By starting now, and working together, we can position downtown to be a leader in this change, including how our garages and building will adapt to these new technologies. We can adopt a mobility as service model for downtown. Downtown's environment really sets us up for us to do this very well. Where what it does is it allows a user that has a subscription through the smartphone app that employs car and bike rental 
transit trips, ride hailing service for all one price, just pay it monthly, with a single payment platform giving the user the option to choose whichever mode works best that day for which trip you want to take, and you don't have to own any vehicle. Disruption in connectivity and transportation is before us, and we must embrace it. So perhaps you're a little overwhelmed with what you've seen and heard here, but if you look back to the progress that we have made in recent years, we're gaining real momentum in advancing Houston's downtown. We face challenges, and working together, we have made the most of them. Plan Downtown provides this launch pad for our community as we approach the next five, 10, 20 years, building on the four pillars of making downtown Houston's greatest place to be, the premier business and government location, the standard for livability, and the innovative leader in connectivity. And Lizzie, Gemina, and all of us will celebrate our city's 2036 bicentennial. Downtown remains at the forefront in advancing this great global city. Listed in the report, you will also at the back, and let me just take a moment here to acknowledge everybody. We have uh, all the organizations and volunteers that have worked on this and the consultants and the staff to create Plan Downtown. I want again to express our sincerest gratitude to our co-sponsors of this, our, our leadership group and our steering committee, and all of you have participated. So I, I can tell you in this room, if I have you stand up, the whole room stands up. But give yourself a, a hand because we appreciate you and what you've done. So in closing, once again, I want to thank our excellent board and our incredibly supportive members, our governmental leaders, the boards and staff of our collaborating organizations and, and all our partners here, uh, and, and the incredibly hardworking staffs of all of these organizations as well. I find that the thing that makes our city so unique is, is how well we work together. And I think we can see the progress. Now, um, uh, you know, kind of coming down to the wire here, okay? Uh, we have a lot of work to do today, okay? But in the months ahead, um, we've got to get going here. But before we do that, okay, I think it's now time to have a wonderful celebration in our city. So let's give our Astros a great parade today. So thank you, and thank you for being here. <laughs>